employees being late. We see that a lot. I'll talk to a restaurant person and they'll say, I have all kinds of employees that are late. I, I don't know how to deal with the tardiness. I don't near, know how to deal with the call-offs and the, the six, the, the people calling in sick and saying I can't make it. I don't know how to deal with all of those issues. Well, it's interesting because what happens is the manager doesn't get mad until the person's an hour late. The manager doesn't get mad until the person's late four times. Actually, in a lot of cases, the manager doesn't get mad until now that person's really short-staffed and the manager actually has to work. Versus if the guideline right up front would be, if you're a minute late, you're late. You wouldn't get to the hour late. You wouldn't get the consistent track record of people not showing up for shifts. Ask your employees the question, why did you not call me hours and hours before you were late to tell me you were going to be late? Well, because this happened or that happened. You'll hear the list of excuses. But see, there's not enough communication back and forth to determine if it's real. In our world now, we use the term, oh, it's just a little white lie. The employee told me they had a flat tire. Really? Did they show you the receipt to get the fat, flat tire fixed? Well, I never asked for it. Why not? Why not ask for the receipt to see if you got the flat tire fixed? I want to teach my employees that if they went out last night and had a few beers and are hungover today, tell me. I'm okay with that. I was young once too. A few beers in it, not going to hurt anybody. It happens. I don't want a track record of it. I don't want consistently dealing with the fact that you went out last night and got a little drunk and now you're hungover and it's impacting my business. I don't want that. But you know what? I do want you to be so honest with me where you can call me and say, hey, this came up or this issue happened. Don't tell me you got a flat tire. Tell me you got up late. I'm fine with that. It happens. But if you lie to me, you're fired. Well, what you'll find is your employees will come talk to you more. They'll come talk to you about, hey, I struggle with being late. Can you teach me something that will help me not be late? Hey, you know, I struggle with this, that, or the other. Can you help me with? See, I mean, I use this strategy with my kids. I give my kids the hot stoves, what they can and can't do. For the most part, I can deal with most anything. It's not that big a deal. But if they touch the hot stoves, they're going to get burnt. Needless to say, you can't fire your kids, but you can discipline your kids. In business, you can fire your employees. And I can tell you great employees do not like it when you let the slackers off the hook. If you want to get better employees, a better team of employees, manage towards the best employees. Don't manage to the slackers. Get rid of the slackers. Teach the hot stove theory. Best way for you to do it is decide what's important to you. I know what items are on my hot stove list. I have 12 or 13 of them. They're on my hot stove list. You should have items that are on your hot stove list. As a boss, the things that I just can't have happen. Period. End of discussion. And it may be that this is something that if it happens, it hurts my business big time. Another hot stove might be, well, it doesn't hurt my business, but it just simply irritates me. So I'm not going to deal with that. And make your list of hot stoves. And then tell your employees, here's my list of hot stoves. Don't touch it. If you touch it, you're going to get burnt. Tell them my story. Because you could just as easily understand that back in the day, a lot of people had hot stoves sitting there. A lot of people could learn from that analogy. And if you rolled that out in your restaurants, you would see the performance of your restaurants improve simply because you placed the hot stoves for the employees. <laughs>